Hi everybody, it's Amy at Crafty Cat and it is time again for the 50 stack challenge and you need the hashtag 50 stack challenge um, in order to make it so that you end up in the group, especially if you're like putting posting on Instagram, that way they all go together in the same place. So if anybody searches, they'll see your post as well. So make sure you use the hashtag 50 stack challenge also on YouTube. That way I can find them and put them in the playlist, which is also hashtag 50 stack challenge. <laughs> so definitely check out uh, the playlist hashtag 50 stack challenge um, to see everybody that's uh, doing these guest checks or they may be using a different background, which is totally fine. I just started with guest checks because I had a stack and um, was like it would be fun to use a whole stack so that's why it's 50 because there's 50 guest checks in these um, the type of guest checks that I get there's 50 of them in a stack so each week I take two guest checks and I draw one prompt for each one so that means I'm drawing two prompts each week I let you know what they are and then you can decorate whatever you like you can even just use regular like scrap of paper uh, cardstock whatever um, for your background and then just use that one prompt per guest check envelope piece of paper whatever and um, you can play along it's just meant to be fun and build up our stash and um, yeah, nothing, nothing stressful or complicated. And a lot of people have said, oh, I haven't started yet. Am I going to be late? You know, when is it over? It's not over. I'm just going to let it stay open. And um, you can make them as you choose. Of course, after we're done making this stack, um, we're going to start on another challenge, probably after the new year. But um, and then we'll be on to that. And so I'll probably be paying more attention to those as far as putting them in the playlist and things like that. So that's the only um, problem you might have if you start later is that, um, you know, I might not be as good at keeping up with putting them in the playlist and all those kind of things, but you can just contact me and I will be happy to do that. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Don't know. But you can join at any time. It makes no difference to me. And like I said, there will be a little bit of gap in time from when we finish this stack because we're on 29 and 30. So we're getting real close to that 50 mark. Um, and the start of the new challenge, which um, as I mentioned, will be after the new year just because it gets too crazy around Christmas and I just don't want to um, start it then. I want to give everybody a chance to maybe catch up as far as they can with this challenge and then we can all start after the new year. Okay, so last week we had doily as our prompt. So you can see I have all kinds of doily on my guest check. You don't have to do it like that. You could use one doily and then all different stuff. That's totally fine. I have no issue with that whatsoever. And then for torn paper strips, I tore strips of paper and put them all over a dress. Oh, and I did add these after the video. There's just a couple strips of paper that I added to the guest check background. Oops, sorry. Um, so yeah, you can use as, you know, two strips of paper and do something different for the whole rest of it. So yeah, that's, it's just that you have to use the prompt. It doesn't matter how much of it you're using or, you know, whatever. All right, so we're gonna draw. These are all the past prompts. So you can do a screenshot of that if you would like. That's not all of them because there are more on the next page and I'll turn the page. So go ahead and do a screenshot. And turn the page and then there's more here magazine image doily torn paper strips that's what we have on this side so I have this whole little sack of torn pieces of paper um, which is stuck like mostly one word but sometimes like index card it's one item but it's multiple words you see what I'm saying okay let me see so for number 29 we are rubber stamped. You can use silicone stamp too. I just put rubber, but it doesn't matter. A stamp. Just use a, I think I put rubber stamp just so people wouldn't get confused with postage stamp. It's uh, some type of, you know, stamp. Silicone stamp, rubber stamp, whatever you want to use. Okay. Just a stamp, not a postage stamp. If you still have rubber stamps like I do, it won't be a problem. But if you don't and you just have the silicone ones, that's totally fine. 
you're probably just not as old as I am. <laughs> I mean, you can buy those still at Hobby Lobby, but um, yeah, I know they're not as common as they used to be. All right, number 30 is ink. So whatever that means to you, I have no issues as long as it's some kind of ink. It can be like, you know, these kind of inks, liquid inks. It can be stamp pads, can be ink spatters. It can be whatever you want it to be. It could be more stamping, right? I don't know how that happens. Isn't that weird how that happens? So guess check 29 will need to be some type of rubber stamp or silicone stamp, a stamped image. How's that? And then 30 is ink, whatever that means to you. You can draw and it works because that's ink. So anyway, I will see you guys in just a moment. Okay, I am back with ink. Sorry, rubber stamp is first on check 29. Ink is on check 30. I'm going to move check 30 out of the way. And yes, they both have similar um, trees on them. I just took strips of book page. Um, is something like this, I think. <laughs> Glued them all over a book page, just one book page. And then cut out a couple of goofy looking funky little trees. And this one too. So that's what I have so far. I figured you guys didn't really probably need to watch me do that. So I have some actual rubber stamps <laughs> from um, 1999, Stampin' Up. So yeah, it's their, uh, which one is that? That has those Simply Seasonal. I love this set, one of my all time favorites. I use it a lot still. So yeah, so I hope you're all doing good. I don't know if I said that, this is a different day. <laughs> Even though we're on the same the same project, um, it took me a little bit to wrap my head around what I wanted to do. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is stamp something back here. That is something I did not think about. Maybe I'll just do the same as I'm gonna do for the other one. I was gonna stamp um, snowflakes on the background back there, just for the fun of it. If I can find a blue, and I apologize, I should have done this already, but I didn't. So now I gotta go through all these and find a blue one. So yeah, I hope you're all doing good. I am. Oh, and I am so sorry, you guys in Florida. My goodness, and I know by the time you see this, yeah, it's all over and everything, but that whole hurricane thing down there this year is just relentless. It is not going to give you guys a break at all. So I'm so sorry. I hope you're all well and safe and your families are all safe. I know you haven't even really gotten to get over the last... Um, hurricane and you get walloped again. Fish. That is one thing I am glad we do not have here. I mean, I'll take snow and earthquakes. We don't have earthquakes super duper often, so that's good. But we did have a good one last year. I mean, it didn't destroy anything, so by no means is it anywhere comparable to a hurricane, but did crack some driveways and things like that. And the ground rolled. You could literally see it roll. Which is the first time I've seen that. And I've been in a few earthquakes, but... I mean, I guess it always rolls, but sometimes it's just more obvious than other times. <laughs> So yeah, I'm just using um, Blueprint Sketch, Tim Holtz Distress Oxide, which also will count for the next uh, check, guess check, because it is ink. But right now we're not doing that. We're doing um, rubber stamping, and I am rubber stamping away. All right, so the other thing I think I'm gonna do is ink around the outside with that. I need to snip my 
softeners here. I don't want to smear that because it does smear until it dries entirely. All right, where do I have? Thought I had a blue. I think all I have is this blue, but we're just gonna use it because at least it's blue. It's the wrong blue, that's Mermaid Lagoon, but who knows if I have one for this blueprint sketch. I don't use the colors very often to like ink around the edges with. So a lot of times I don't have all the little, I gotta get some more spongies. Okay. There's that much of that done. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna ink around my tree. And I'm using the brown just because a lot of these are vintage old old um, book page, but you could definitely use a colorful one as well. I'm going to kind of ink a lot on my tree trunk. So my son is coming for the weekend and I'm very happy. He's actually coming for a friend's birthday or birthday um, wedding. So and then he'll be back again for Thanksgiving very soon. So I'm getting spoiled. I don't love him driving, but just because there's a kind of a icky pass up there that's often snowing and yucky and probably definitely is now because we've had snow. So it just, I don't know. Okay, so I am using Evergreen Bow. And I'm just going to, I guess I can move this. That's what I got the paper for. And I'm just gonna stamp on my, on my tree. Definitely using my rubber stamp, right? going to keep going down the tree kind of like that. Hopefully it'll look like something. <laughs> yeah, it's gotten real cold here, like 16 degrees last night. I was like, Ugh. I am not ready for this at all. I mean, not that I ever really am, but man been not nice at all. I really should let that dry. I'm going to try to be, this is a little berry that comes in that same stamp set. I'm just going to try to get, you know, where there isn't green because it is wet. I can see it. Yeah, definitely using my rubber stamps. I don't know why it's like I go... A long time and don't use them at all and then other times I use them for a bit but yeah don't use them anywhere near what I used to Afraid I got green on there and really you know there's some cute ones I don't know why I guess I just don't do a lot of stamping anymore uh, I see <laughs> okay so I like that. And then it can go on our card. I want it to dry some more because man, it is wet, wet. Real wet. Do I wanna put maybe some old paper back there? Pasha, what are you doing? He's literally right directly behind my feet, like right behind my feet. If I move an inch, it's like step on the cat. So I keep having to look to see exactly where he's at. I just don't think I like that blue very much with that. I shouldn't have done that, I guess, but I just wanted something on there. So now I'm thinking I'm gonna put a little tissue over it. 
I think it's because of all the um, brown book page. It's just throwing me off with that blue for some reason. So I'm going to put some of this on there. I'm just coming over to my glue book here that's off to the side I'm just gonna put glue all over the top which may make my glue run a little bit probably should have thought this part through I was too busy messing with the trees to think about everything else so <laughs> there you have it all right, I don't know which side I want to use. There's always, yeah, I want the, the um, top up, basically. And I don't care if some of those lines and numbers get on here. Or wrinkles. I like the wrinkles. They just add some texture to it. black bits of paper and book page and everything all over the place. Shocking, right? Yeah, I think I've definitely decided that we're going to do just 50 pieces of ephemera next time and I might let it stretch out like kind of over the whole year like one a week um so you'll have a couple weeks where you won't ha have to do anything but sometimes that's kind of nice in case you had to miss and catch up or whatever so um since a year is 52 weeks I think we'll just do one piece of ephemera every week I'm just brainstorming out loud <laughs> um and so it can be whatever it can be altered envelope it can be altered paper clip uh, some kind of pocket book page pockets whatever and then you just have to use um oh so i was going to do the opposite thing wasn't i so maybe it will have to be two pieces of ephemera a week because i do like the opposites idea So, yeah, something like that. I'll get it figured out here eventually, right? My big thing right now is we got Christmas coming. <laughs> now is it too much? I just really don't like the blue, you guys. I'm really struggling with that. I think I'm gonna add some white gesso. Oh my gosh. If I can get it open, that is. Seriously stuck. I think I'll just take my card and put it on. I need my little, what I do? My word. I apologize. All over the place. I'm weird about blue. I don't know. Like, sometimes it works for me, and other times I just, I don't like it on things. I don't know. Very strange, I know. I want to try to keep the 29s visible if possible. Okay, so 
So I'm going to set this out of the way to dry and we'll start on the next one just because I'm probably going to end up having a similar situation with that. All right. So now that I know I don't like the snowflakes, I'm not going to do that to this one. And this one we're going to do differently because obviously it's a different, um, whatchamacallit, prompt. Oh, and here comes the garbage man, of course. Because isn't that always the way? All right, I'm going to kind of paint the color on the tree using the oxide inks, the Distress Oxide inks. I'm not sure exactly what colors I'm going to use here. Because I don't really have great matching ones, if you know what I mean. So we might kind of have to make our own. So I'm using Forest Moss is that one, Bundled Sage, and what's this one? Twisted Citron. I don't want that underneath. Start with the citron and a little bit of this one, the sage. I do have the evergreen bow, which I used on the other one, but it has a lot of blue in it. Kind of using them, um, I guess, like um, what do you call it? Watercolors. Just to give it some color. I've not tried this before, so I have no idea what this is going to end up looking like. It might just be a hot mess. Just giving it some green. Okay, and then on the stem of that, I'm going to use our trunk stem, <laughs> trees, flowers, whatever. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> and this is gathered twigs. And I'll probably ink around it once I get it dry. Okay, I'm going to pause and get both of my trees or things dry and I'll be back. Okay, I am back. So, that didn't work. <laughs> so what I did, it just didn't really, I mean there was a teeny bit of green, but once it dried, they just sort of look like slightly green tinted book pages. So then what I did is I went back over it over the whole thing with just this bundled sage, just drag it right over it. So that uh, gave me more of a green look, which is what I wanted. And then I did the same thing with the gathered twigs. I rubbed it on there and then dried it. And I like it because you can still see part of the words there and stuff. So that's okay, but it wasn't exactly what I was thinking, but it turned out all right. So now what we're gonna do, and this one's all dry and good. So, we're going to stamp our little tree with some pine cones. And yeah, probably better if they were smaller pine cones, but they're not. So, <laughs> use what you have, right? All right. And I'm just using the walnut stain. I don't have a permanent, um, like a stays on or anything like that in a brown color or archival ink, whatever it's called. I just get all that confused. And this is the darkest one I have, is the walnut. But that's okay, it's just gonna be kind of subtle. So these are gonna be almost like matching, 
you know, and of course you don't have to do anything like that. It just so happens that once I got rolling with these trees and the paper strips and all that, I was like, ooh, I like it and I'm gonna do a tree on the other one. But of course they can be entirely different from each other. So don't feel like you have to make a set or whatever. If you know, if you're just starting out. Uh, you didn't already know that. So that one's gonna go on there. Let's put this back here. And I have these, I made this the other day. Um, last week when I did the strips of paper with the art doll, I had some pieces left and so I did that and a whole bunch of mushrooms. I actually got a lot out of that one book page that had the different colored strips on it. Anyways, I made this little um, journaling card. It's just a tiny one um, with the mushrooms and a snowflake and all that. So I thought what I would do is just glue the top and the bottom of this and have it as like a little tuck for that. And I like it because there's some blue that helps with that blue back there that it was not making me very happy. And then on this one, I think I'll do the same thing. So this is almost like mask making in a way because I'm making very similar items. But um, I'm going to glue the top and the bottom. And then this is one of the tags from my mushroom Christmas digital. And I just added this word or the words piece to all. And it opens like that. So I've got some journaling space. So that's what I'm going to do. So this one was kind of quick. And I know it's because I did a lot of it off camera, but I mean, it was just stuff that, you know, getting stuff dry and whatever, I didn't think you guys would be super duper excited about, so. And yes, I did, which I didn't do with you guys. Um, I covered, <laughs> stamped on that with the pine boughs that I used on this tree, this one and covered it over with the sewing tissue and did the same thing with the gesso where I just scraped it over using just a, a plastic hard card. Okay, so I'm gonna ink around this because I don't think I ever did that. So yeah, sometimes you make these itty bitty or, you know, some small things, and you're like, what in the world am I even going to do with that? And then, see, this is just perfect to slide in here and have a little, another little journaling spot. So kind of have, like, two pockets today, but that's okay. And I'm going to put some extra glue right here because I kind of wanted to rip when I... It did not like the being wet book page and being wet, um, especially old book page, is not a great combo as I'm sure you all know. And then we're gonna spatter those with some white ink. <clears throat> and since I don't have a digital um, image on these cards themselves, I shouldn't be getting that pink. Um, it always turns pink, the white ink or paint. Paint does the same thing. So that'll, that'll work out okay. I need to ink around this. I think, I think it's okay. I can ink that later. But it'll slide in there. So I'm gonna move these out of the way for the moment while I spatter those or splatter those. What do I do with my white ink? There it is. And we'll just get them both at the same time. Um, that's still going to get all over my desk, but... Because <laughs> I have no ability to do that without getting it all over my desk for some reason. I'm just shaking this ink because it kind of... It is uh, Windsor and Newton ink, and this one's just white. I like these inks. Off a little bit. This one's getting kind of thick because I've had it a while. Hopefully it will work. It's almost gone too. If 
crushes out watching birds <laughs> on TV. <laughs> Not in real life, even though the sun is shining and he could totally be out watching real birds. And our yard has been jam packed with them. Wow. Because we have the grapevines in the back. And I, I always try if, you know, if we get enough grapes and this year, man, we got more than enough. Um, I leave some on there for the birds. And uh, yeah, so it's been cuckoo out there with birds. But he doesn't really care. <laughs> he just likes to watch my TV. <laughs> okay, I did turn the camera off, but then I had a thought. So um, I probably chopped it somewhere. So I apologize if it seemed an abrupt change. But anyway, I am going to go around the outside of these trees with um, an ink pen because especially this one, which is my own fault. It does blend a little bit. So just to make them so you can see them better, I'm just going around with just a rough, nothing um, precise, just kind of to outline these trees. And I'm going shaky and weird. Part of that's because that's my hands and I can't help it, but <laughs> part of it is I don't want it to be perfect if you know what I mean not that I could make it perfect but that's really not my deal just something so you can see them a little more and that'll give it a little interest if you know what I'm saying Yeah, that's become a real thing with me as this shaky thing when I tried to do a fine motor, but that's to be expected for tremors and getting older. And I'm just drawing some lines and I'll pick it up to show you. Hopefully you can see, maybe if I have a little better. So I've just, I've just went around it so I can see it better. That's all. Very simple. I mean, not everybody gets a tremor when they get older, but my dad had it. And so I'm thinking that's where I got it. I remember when I was younger, how I thought that was so crazy, you know, that you get older and your hands shake and all that, and oh, that'll never happen. <laughs> and in some spots, if you want, you can do a couple lines or however, however you like it. Or maybe you don't like it at all. <laughs> There's that. Okay, I think I like that. That's better. It just wasn't standing out. So, and I wish I did have a darker. Maybe I'm going to go do some pine cones in um, black just to see them a little better if I can figure out where I put that stamp. There it is. Because they're real. Faint, and I don't have one of these in a brown. Walnut's the darkest, so I'm just going to kind of go back over the top of the ones that are there, that are in brown already. So definitely got the ink going and the rubber stamping on both of them. <laughs> Not necessarily meant to, but oh, you know what I need to do? I need to put a little piece of paper in there because I'm afraid I'm gonna stamp off onto the card and I don't wanna do that. Can't tell which, oh, it's the one this way, I think. And even though they're not lining up 100%, because obviously, I could never make that happen unless I was using one of those uh, 
stamping plates or whatever. The, um, I can't even think what they're called now. That help you stamp over something multiple times. Um, I like it. I don't mind it. I think it kind of gives it a cool effect. Okay. Yeah, I like that better because I can see it better. All right. So this will go in here. Maybe. Did I not leave it big enough? Guess not. So this will have to be more like a tuck or I'll have to put in a smaller. Oh, goodness. Some days. Oh, so sorry. I just whacked you guys. I will fix it just like this. Except I cut it crooked. Oh, that's still crooked. I'll just cut it with my cutter in a minute <laughs> before I keep chopping till it's gone, right? I was I can't remember what I was watching the other day and they were talking about circles. And, you know, cutting out circles and you just end up with smaller and smaller and smaller because you keep going, oh, it's just a little bit wonky there. Oh, it's just a little bit wonky there. And then pretty soon, like, there's nothing left. That's kind of the way I am with everything, it seems. And I need some glue right under there. Yeah, this one did not like um, getting wet and dried again. All the book page came off. Wow, that just came lobbing out. Um, the book page came off and everything. So yeah, it was interesting. So that'll go in there. And then in this one, we have that one. All right, guys. So rubber stamp is 29 and 30 is ink. And they are very similar, but also quite different. So I'm very pleased with how they turned out. I hope you guys like them. And I hope you enjoy making yours if you're joining in on this challenge. So have an awesome rest of your day and we'll chat again tomorrow. Love you guys. Bye.